For the past several years, from once to 2009, my family and I have taken an annual vacation down to our favorite place, the Keys. The Florida Keys are a string of tropical islands stretching about 120 miles off the southern tip of the state of Florida between the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico. While in the Keys, we feed tarpon at Robbie's, eat at some of our favorite restaurants, and best of all, go fishing almost every day. Our vacations have been filled with beautiful weather and scenery, incredible people, and lots of fish. While we have had a lot of fun, we have also learned about some critical environmental problems our favorite place is facing. Two important problems facing the Keys are the lack of clean water in Florida Bay and struggling fish population. First, Florida Bay is not getting enough fresh water. Florida Bay is the southernmost estuary of the Everglades system, located at the tip of the mainland and cradled by the Florida Keys to the south. The bay is nearly 1,000 square miles and it is filled with salt flats, seagrass, basins, and mangrove islands. The bay is an important nursery, nesting site, and feeding ground for dolphins, manatees, crocodiles, and many different types of birds. In addition to its value for other wildlife, Florida Bay is a paradise for highly sought after spin and fly game fish. Florida Bay is known as the only place in the world where one can catch tarpon, bonefish, permit, snook, and redfish all in one morning. In other words, to say that Florida Bay is an international treasure is quite the understatement. However, to keep this treasure healthy for many generations to come, some major steps are required. Historically, fresh water has flowed from Lake Okeechobee through the sea of grass and into the bay. The flow of fresh water balanced out an otherwise fragile ecosystem, keeping the bay healthy. Nowadays, when lake water hits a certain level, it gets sent to the St. Lucie River to the east and the Calasadoochee to the west. Because of this, Florida Bay gets one-sixth of the freshwater flow it used to. This lack of freshwater flow has caused extremely high salinity levels and also a lack of oxygen. As a result, everything in the bay has been negatively impacted. Seagrass, an essential building block of the bay, has experienced a massive die-off. Seagrass is important because it provides food and shelter for many different types of animals and it helps regulate water quality. Fish, as well as other marine animals, have also struggled as a result of the lack of clean water. Captain Johnny Sheehan has been a Keys guide for over 30 years and he has been fishing Keys waters his whole entire life. Johnny has been responsible for some of our best days out on the water, helping my little brother catch his favorite fish the elicit permit. Johnny has also been an incredible source of knowledge, and I recently asked him what he felt like was the biggest problem facing the Keys. He said, quote, the, lo the largest problem facing the, Keys, facing the Keys waters is an increasing number of areas where the seagrass is dying in Florida Bay. Every year now, we lose more and more of the precious grass on the bottom of the bay, and the main reason is the lack of fresh water naturally running off the mainland. The grass is critical to the survival of juvenile fish." End quote. Second, struggling fish populations in the Keys have been a major problem. Bonefish, a highly sought after game fish caught throughout the Keys, has been on a steady decline for many years. According to some reports, in the last 40 years, there has been a bonefish catch decline of around 40%. Recently, a study was conducted by Florida International University coastal ecologist Jennifer Rehag and a team of scientists. The study focused on bonefish populations throughout South Florida. The study was very extensive and it included nearly 300 anglers and fishing guides on their fishing experiences in 2015. The study found that the, that the bonefish population decline started in around 1985 and the fewest catches were seen after 1999. The notorious 2010 cold front heavily hurt the species, as well as many other types of marine life. The study found that the Stevens population decline, decline occurred in none other than Florida Bay. When in the Keys, one of my favorite things to do is drive a few miles down the road to Long Key State Park and walk out onto the flats looking for bonefish. These oceanside sand flats are healthy and they are surrounded by healthy grass. However, there are never any bonefish. When talking to Captain Johnny while fishing one day, 
Johnny informed, informed my brother and I that the long key flats used to hold them fish, but they are no longer productive. I can only wonder whether this is a result of high fishing pressure or a symptom of the larger problem. Despite never finding any benefish, the sunsets always make the trip worthwhile. Because benefish have always been a catch and release fish, a lot of what we know about them is based on anecdotal evidence from fishing guides. However, scientists have also discovered that juvenile benefish spend lots of their time in low salinity environments, especially for the bay. As a result, the study called for more conservation and management of benefish populations as well as cleaner water in the Everglades and Florida Bay. According to Rehag, quote, people haven't looked for benefish in low salinity environments because they think they're a marine species. This finding tells us the link between benefish, fresh water, and the Everglades is stronger than we previously thought. We need to, we need to consider low salinity habitats in benefish conservation and management. Another important game fish in the climb is the tarpon. Tarpon are the most highly sought after game fish on the planet and carry the nickname the Silver King. They are like living dinosaurs and they have been in our oceans since prehistoric times. Tarpon can grow up to eight feet long and weigh up to 280 pounds with the current world record in 286 pounds. Tarpon have gained notoriety in the fishing world because of the many challenges they present. Tarpon have giant eyes that can easily tell the difference between a meal straight from the ocean and a meal with a hook in it from fishermen trying to catch them. When one is lucky enough to have a tarpon by the end of their line, tarpon have extremely bony mouths that make them hard to hook long enough to bring them into the boat. In addition, tarpon will fight an angler for hours on end, assuming that the angler survives these spectacular and violent jumps the fish are so well known for. Tarpon are truly one of a kind, and just like benefish and all other species in Florida Bay, should be kept healthy so many generations to come can enjoy fishing from them. The Benefish Tarpon Trust works to do exactly that. The Benefish Tarpon Trust mission is, quote, to conserve and restore benefish, tarpon, and permit fisheries and habitats through research, stewardship, education, and advocacy. According to their website, quote, in the Florida Keys and South Florida, Benefish Tarpon Trust is working to determine and address the causes of declining fish populations. Benefish Tarpon Trust has defined a series of research steps that will lead to actionable knowledge to improve the Keys Flats fishery. We will advocate for those actions that will protect and restore the fishery and habitats. Benefish Tarpon Trust is the leading researcher in the South Florida Flats fishing industry which, according to the aforementioned Florida International University report, generates, quote, an annual economic impact of more than $465 million. Benefish Tarpon Trust has many important ongoing projects. However, the Tarpon Acoustic Project is definitely one worth mentioning. The project is, quote, a collaborative five-year program designed to broaden our understanding of tarpon movement and habitat uses. The project addresses important questions such as, is the tarpon population large and robust or small and vulnerable? And do the problems with Lake Okeechobee and Everglades restoration impact tarpon? To answer these questions, scientists will catch a tarpon and insert an acoustic tag into its abdomen. The fish is then released and the scientists wait. The scientists have over 4,000 receivers dotted up and down the coast and when the fish swims in range within one of these receivers, the tag will send a ping to the receiver. Scientists record the date, time, and location of the fish. This project allows scientists to track where the tarpon goes and at what time of year that tarpon moves. This data allows scientists to study migration and spawn patterns of the fish, which is important knowledge when figuring out how to truly conserve the fish population. In conclusion, Florida Bay and all the fish in it is an incredible source of recreation and fascination. However, without proper research and action, it could continue its eerie decline and worst of all, completely fall apart. I hope my speech has, in, has inspired you to take a trip down to the Keys, but even better than a friendly reminder to be thankful for the beautiful world we live in today. Thanks.